All the center lines. All the center lines. Hey, 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 hi. Hi, everybody. Adam Savage here in my cave. Uh, recently, we've put up a few videos about the fact that I reorganized the cave. Uh, I significantly reorganized the cave. This room is fairly similar to what it was, except that it's more open because I was able to move a lot of stuff out of this room and into this room. So this big room has become sort of my hardware store and another workspace, sorry about the creaking. And then this store is, this room is more like my main fabrication room where the machine tools are. It's like tools here, hardware store there, work happens everywhere. 15 years ago or so, my then cameraman on Mythbusters, Tim Ale, would introduce me to a system called Sortimo. We've talked about it many times on the channel here, S-O-R-T-I-M-O. -O. This is their tea box with two X's, one of my favorite um, parts sorting designs in the world with indexable and removable compartments um, and a clear top. I spent some real money back when I was making television money um, outfitting myself with a whole bunch of Sortimos and cross-referencing them with an alphabetized cross-reference list. It's been a fantastic system here in the cave. And here they are in the hardware store space. Uh, and I have an issue with them here, despite their amazing utility, which is that every time I need something from one of them, I've got to pull it out and find like a horizontal surface like this table here to put it on so I can open it up. Recently, I acquired something at a garage sale in San Francisco. I picked up this set of drawers. Now they were full of a bunch of stainless hardware and they're fantastic. But what I love most about them is what you just saw happen. Pull it out, open it up, get what you need inside. And they never had to take this whole bin out to find a horizontal surface for it. Why? This drawer system seems quite useful. And then I took a look at the Sortimos and I discovered that they themselves have uh, 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 what looks like artifacts for drawer slides here or for some sort of catch system. So I attempted to make some drawer slides that held them with like um, with little blocks of acrylic out here. And it was too, um, it didn't work. There are mechanical reasons it didn't work. They're not important here because that's not the solution I ended up going with. The solution I ended up going with was to realize that I want the same thing that those blue drawers provide, which is an actual metal shelf that goes under one side, across the bottom and up the other side, and that those could attach to the drawer slides. So all I needed was a single sheet of aluminum and a pair of drawer slides for each of the sort of cabinets. And this, this is what we, this is the first test. This is my, 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 uh, my tryout of this. Uh, this is the very first drawer I built. Um, it has a little high here. This is the second one, and I kind of worked out some of the kinks on that. And as you can see, the drawer goes in, the drawer goes in here, nice and right. So now, so now, theoretically, if I had this system going. I can pull out the drawer, open it up, get what I need, put it back, and I no longer have to hunt for a horizontal surface every time. This is what it led to, is every time I needed something as small as one of the parts in here, I needed a table space this big every single time. That's fine at the beginning of the day when there's only a couple tools on my workbench, but within an hour of embarking on any project, there's like 40, 50 tools lurking about. 40 or 50, okay, maybe that's a little too much, but within like, within a short period of time, all the horizontal surfaces are covered with the project at hand. That is just a natural course of things. So I desire, to make a drawer system like this for all of my sort of modes in there. What does that actually mean? It means a lot of drawer slides. It means a lot of pieces of aluminum. 
It means a a study in um, the specific kind of manufacturing that is among the most tedious and time eating. A particular facet of making stuff is when you have to make many of one thing. Whenever you have to make many, many, I'm not talking like 10, I'm talking like 50, 100. Whenever you're in numbers like that, every operation can add hours to your day. If you have 70 things to make and you add a one minute task, that's well over an hour, right? So suffice to say that when you are embarking on making many, efficiency is super, super important. And I've been cogitating this whole operation for weeks, refining it, refining it, refining it, breaking down to simpler and simpler pieces and chunks. For instance, I have to cut. Oh, let's take a look at this piece of aluminum here, right? So we've got a uh, we've got a piece of aluminum that's bent up on the sides, bent up on the back. The back is riveted to the sides and to the drawer slides, and there are punches for the drawer slides for the rivets. Now, that means I've got a sheet of aluminum. I have to make four cuts in, two, three, four, two holes in, uh, sorry, uh, six holes in, one, two, three, four, five, six, and four bends. 70 pieces of aluminum, four cuts each, six holes each, four bends each. I, I can take one piece of aluminum and do that in, you know, 15 minutes. Yeah, 15 minutes. So let's extrapolate that out. Uh, 15 minutes, that's four per hour. That means uh, I would get 60 done in three hours. Hold on. All my math is wrong. Let me at 15 minutes per times set 15 minutes a piece. That's almost it. at 15 minutes per sheet of aluminum. That's over 18 hours of work. That's more than two full days of my labor. And I think I can go faster. Um, there's a company here in San Francisco called Max Metals. And they were able to deliver 70 sheets of aluminum to me, identically the same size like this. Um, I don't have my I don't have the exact dimensions of this off the top of my head, but uh, Max Metals did a beautiful job and it was very reasonably priced. I used, um, for this project, I used 040, that's 40 thousandths or one millimeter thick, 6061 aluminum. That number delineates uh, your standard aircraft alloy of aluminum. Um, now I had to make four cuts in each sheet. And two of them are really easy cuts because they're these cuts. It's just this big diagonal that separates the side bend from the front bend. Um, I was able to do that on my table saw. Um, I built I built a template, this template, with a, uh, a rack in the back to guide it in the table saw's frame. And I simply chucked a piece of aluminum in here like this and made the cut here, you can see it here. That's how it went. That, that was the cut. When you have to make a ton of cuts in sheets of metal or wood like this, this kind of template is amazing. It, I was able to do this in stacks of 10 in five minutes. So that was the first two cuts for all 70 sheets. Now I have to make the second two cuts and it's more complex because back here in this, um, Back here in the corner here, I want the back to bend forward and connect to both the side and the drawer slide. That's a precise little hole arrangement. And it means I have to cut a piece out of the corner like this. The striped part is what gets cut out. This is a tough part to cut out. Um, specifically, uh, that cut I can do on a bandsaw and that cut I can do on a bandsaw, but that cut it's a little more tough. So I think what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to stack all 70 sheets on the bed of my mill milling machine. And I'm going to come in here with basically like a half inch milling bit. 
and I'm going to cut a hole here like that, that hole will allow me to make these two cuts on the bandsaw. They'll just meet the hole. Boop, boop. So drilling the hole in all 70 sheets, that's two holes across them, one and two, that should take less than 15 minutes. And then the other cuts, just another few minutes, you know, maybe it's like 30 minutes to do all the rest of the cuts. However, before I do those cuts, I require to make the punches in the sides uh, to match the drawer slides. One of the nice things about full extension drawer slides for installation is that you can remove uh, usually the third extension and just attach this to your piece. So oh, 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 oh. this piece dictates my, um, my hole position, right? Yeah, it's that to that. And so that's the location of the two holes. This is a hole punch. This is a hole punch. Doink, it punches a beautiful 1 8 inch hole. So what I need to do is be able to cut that hole. Yeah, I got it there. And then and the other one is there. Okay, so if that is that, right? So this means that I always get the depth correct, right? Because I'm coming in, coming in. But I guess I don't have to, I can make that cut now and then I can do all the whole, whole drilling later. Okay, I thought that I remember. It is easy for me to get too abstract about all the component parts. I was thinking I had to punch the holes before I made these cuts, but I don't think I have to. I think popping the holes is the last thing before. Before we start to actually do the bending. So first I'm going to, let's get to this part. Let's get to these holes.
there you go. That's the two holes drilled in all 70 sheets at once. And I'm aware, I know what you're thinking. You're like, hey, why don't you just uh, chuck that into your uh, table saw and do that slice all at once and like, No, no, we're gonna make this corner cut uh, a sheet at a time and we'll get through all 70 in well less than 30 minutes, I believe. All right, there they are. The, uh, they're all finished. Now it's just time to work out the hole punching. So I have completed the cutting and the hole punching for 70, actually 60, yeah. I have 65 perfect pieces. That's how many drawers I need. So we're gonna go over to the metal break now and set that puppy up. But first I'm gonna have a meeting and I'm gonna come back after the meeting. It won't make any difference to you. You won't notice, but I'll see you in a minute. Okay. Um, my sheets are fully punched. Did I just go over this? Sheets are ready for bending. Um, and just like all the other, I've set this up so I have the same amount of distance from the back as I do from the sides. So I don't need to change those orientations, but I'm not gonna do them all at once. I'm gonna do all the back bends first, and then I'm gonna do the sides. And you'll see, it's a, there's a, there's a process. Uh, but we're gonna, Get a little bit of more tightening going on. So I have to, I have to get this right. Right now, that's not quite.
what I end up with there is some really nice, a nice bend there. That's really great. That's ideal. And that one too, that's nice. Those, that's, um, that's an extra bit of structure I'm getting out of this. Uh, and then the last bend will be the... So, do I do all the back bends first? This is the question. Crazy! No! I'm gonna have to... Oh, that's great. I don't mind that at all. So, it starts like this. We start with Yeah, I like that. All right, let's do a stopwatch. I'm, I'm a, oh, I have completed 40 drawers worth of bending. I have 25 to go. They're all right here. Um, the big issues with the drawer slides is parallelism. So I don't want any of these lines to get bowed out. Those lines have to be nice and straight and they gotta be super parallel. Um, because it's aluminum, it is somewhat adjustable. I have some adjustability, but my job is made a lot easier if I start out parallel and straight. Orlando comes in tomorrow and we're gonna start him off doing some rivet holes in these guys and then uh, attaching the third stage drawer slides to all of them. Um, and then to start marking out our big pieces of three quarter inch. We got some three quarter inch birch ply. Not great, it's birch finish, but inside it's like a horror show. It's like garbage dump in there. Uh, however, it's perfectly structural for us. What we're gonna end up doing is we're gonna end up building a, uh, a rack of three stacks of 13 and a second rack of two stacks of 13. Why, why those breakdowns? I thought of doing two, two and one. And then I realized that three and two use the least amount of uprights of wood. I get some real efficiencies that way. Uh, to make a three stack, I only need four pieces of wood. And to make a two stack, I only need three. Um, so that's seven total, plus enough to go on the home and the lawn and the photo. Um, this work is tiring in a particular way. Um, and I, I often like keep it interesting by, this job is actually almost this is big enough that, uh, how do I say this? I often, I often assuage the tedium. I often assuage the tedium of a job like this by doing math in my head, watching the clock and seeing how many I'm getting done, seeing how fast it's going. Um, I will say also when you're working with sheet metal, your hands could just carve to ribbons with paper cuts. Um, however, all of this is looking really, really great. Uh, yeah. I don't know. Could we be assembling these by the end of the day tomorrow? Oh, right. We're not doing a live stream tomorrow. We're doing that the next day. All right. Uh, but right now, I'm going to go home and feed Maggie and prep for dinner. We're having some friends over. So I will see you guys in 20 seconds. But for me, 15 hours or so. Bye.
Okay, with um, 65 some odd, there may be an extra one or two here, uh, drawer slides all installed. The third stage of each of the full extension slides is installed on my drawer. They're nice and rigid. I'm really happy with how flat everything is. I'm going to, I'm gonna set up some wood here on the table as a kind of quality control. And I'm going to just take a look at the parallelism of all of these. I'm just gonna give a, a check. And if some of them are slightly out of size, I may gather those together. Everything depends on these all being the same as each other. And given that I punch the holes at constant distances, and that I bent them at constant distances, that was a rough one. Uh, they should be really close. Well, we're gonna find out. By the way, the one that I ended up with extra specifically does not have a removal pin here. And you actually can see it. You can actually kind of see it in there, but for some reason it's not coming out. And rather than troubleshoot it, I bought enough that I just toss this one by the wayside. Here, you can see this, see that? Those look great, right? Those, these look pretty good. Eh, ah, This is bad. This is bad and it's boring. Uh, my headstrong progress is halted because I have to undo all of these. They're totally bad. So, uh, yeah, that's what I'm doing. I gotta undo them all. Maybe I should give you an shot. My issue here is that there's no consistency. It's off, here off by an eighth, there off by an eighth. And I think I know what I need to do, but first I just need to undo all of these, which is really boring. I, I should point out, this is making in a nutshell. Thinking you have gleaned or gained some insight into a process only to find it vexes you at the last possible second. I've been here before. Oh, there we go. I just want to say for the record, I'm like 15 minutes into cleaning up and I don't want to clean up right now. I like want to go home and sit in a funk 
but there's really no reason to have a funk. This is really remarkable. This is amazing. I, this is the best shelf thing that's ever happened in my shop. These are the ones I took out. I'm gonna throw them away. Look, I just wanted to stop and tell you that I don't wanna clean up right now, and yet I'm cleaning up. That's how that works sometimes. It's a new day, it's a new dawn, it's a new life for me, yeah. It's a new day, it's a new dawn. And I'm feeling good. Mm. Where are these blows? Look at that. Five, five, five. Five stacks of 13. That one still sticks. I was so vexed last night. Um, anyway, I'll fix that. That's fixable. The next thing's, so we're, we're very close to moving in. Uh, notice that I have put casters under every upright. That's because the amount of weight these things hold as a hidden is, um, it's more than you think. My bearings, my bearings been alone is like 12 pounds. So anyway, I didn't want any droop. This wasn't the best plywood. And that's actually a key issue for me. The plywood here looks really, yeah. It's like, yep. hold on, I'll show you. Here's my, um, here is a lesson. In, there we go. This is why I don't like to ply with. This is the live edge. Wait, wait, wait. First, let's take a look at my, why am I head? There we go. First, let's take a look at my bread and butter plywood, which is Baltic birch ply. And you get those like, look at how pretty that is. And that is uniform. The edge of the Baltic birch ply can be used as a design element. And to be fair, to be really fair to uh, ACX three quarter inch uh, lumberyard ply, like it's always kind of like this. It's not bad. Our local lumberyard has a sale on this ply with a nice service finish, but inside it's, look at this. I, I mean, listen. I don't begrudge people their manufacturing methods. That's fine. I'm glad to pay less for this plywood. But like when you look at it up close, it's freaking head cheese. Anyway, it's hideous to look upon. <laughs> I didn't know I would have a point of view about that. That's the funny thing about a point of view. You don't often know what yours is until it arrives. Anyway, uh, the next thing I want to do, I'm going to slice. I've got some... I've got some nice regular wood in a, in a, in a, I'm basically gonna cut some wood dressing strips and I'm gonna dress the fronts of these. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven uprights. It's a lot of things, but yeah, I'm gonna do that to make it look nice. Isn't that nice? Isn't that much nicer? Look at that. There's that. And there's that. You may wonder why I left this little, um, this little boop boop right here. And that's actually where the alphabetical list goes of everything that's in there. Mm -hmm. I might even go up to like 12 point type something. I don't know, I had it pretty small. Shh. It's time, it's time. We're gonna um, sort of most come out, shelves go in. Sort of most go in. Here's how this goes. Uh, happen. Let's see. Uh, so first up.
Hey there. Um, so I have just completed the installation of my 65 Sordomo trays. Each one comes out and allows access. Um, now it's time to populate it. I've changed some of the ordering numbers. So I'm basically about to do a complete repopulation of this. And then tonight I'm going to build a new, a new uh, spreadsheet of all of the articles that are in here. Uh-huh. So, yeah, I'm just going to ask uh, my uh, computer to play some music. And uh, then we're gonna uh, we're gonna do this. much work here um but the reorg has happened now it's time to document it i know i've been taping it i've been recording it and look at all the old sordomos yes don't worry if you're wondering if some of those will become available they will but right now it's time for me to go through I have 65 slots. I have used 63 of them, which is an addition of an addition of uh, five more than I had before. I didn't expect to fill five. I still have some baby fat left over in some of the some of these, and I have two extras way down here that are completely empty. Completely blue sky could be anything they want. So now it's time to build the spreadsheet. Um, maybe I should have opened with this. Everything is labeled on its face with the main things that it has. But there are all sorts of subcategories that aren't represented by the labels here. This is the broad like, hey, where is that thing? And things are roughly categorically where they should be. For instance, Everything that's rivetable is here. Springs and NPT fittings, O-rings, rubber, corks, all that stuff uh, lives here. Nuts and bolts are almost this entire column. Uh, this is also a lot of nuts and bolts, but also some spacers and things. Over here, this entire column is almost all electronics. Um, this one is ancillary stuff, handles, jewelry, things like that. But what I want is a picture of every single case. Yeah. Then I'm going to load all 63 of those pictures in and build a brand new Excel spreadsheet from scratch. Yeah. That's what we're going to do. When you have a maker shop, when you have a general maker shop, categorization is so difficult. And I have, I have too many electronics things to fit solely into like well, even one column of this because there are bigger things in electronics. So I've got the a whole airplane food cart devoted to electronics with the soldering station on top and all of that. And in there was stuff that was doubled up over here that I didn't even know about. I also discovered my nut rivet insert. Anyway, I... It's not worth going over, but this is a great exercise to do. Um, to be clear, what I'm going to end up with is a list like this one, which is a list of everything, pop rivets. They're in number three. Not here. This is the last or, or organization. L brackets. Oh, nice. Um, and so the, 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 the MO is I'm going to go through, I've taken a picture 
of every single container. Here they are, you can take a look at them. I stand here, I take a picture like this, and as long as I take only one picture per container, I have 62 full containers here, the moment I load them into my computer and airdrop them over, which happened beautifully, uh, they, there are 62 of them. So uh, in Bridge, I did a battery name starting at number 01, and lo, the names of each individual picture in here is Sordimo. Right now I'm on Sordimo 45, and I can see a, uh, there we go. That's what I see in Sordimo 45. If I come on over here and I pull out this connector, you will see, ho ho, it is the self same one. I've picked literally the hardest one to close in this entire rack uh, because it's got all this extra wire sticking up. It needs a little bit of swaging. It's, uh, it's hard with these things that have long tails. Still, I prefer this mode of uh, storage to nearly any other. Uh, there we go, good. Um, and so then I sit there and I, I open up an Excel spreadsheet which I've got right here, and I do 45. I have connectors, and I know that, actually, I'm gonna do connectors XLR. Uh, I'm gonna go back and do 45 XL, X, X, XLR connectors. Um, I've got barrel connectors. I've got 45 barrel connectors, 45 connectors, barrel, 45, uh, alligator clips, 45, um, What do you call those? Oh, uh, those are connectors assorted. Um, what are those called? Those are called RCA connectors. Uh, in fact, I don't pull each one out. I only pulled this one out to show you. Uh, so that 46, if I load it up, here's 46. Now I have all the things I need for 46, and I just start going back and forth and doing uh, 46. 46. This is incandescent lights, and this is 46. Wait, that's 50, wait. Oh, it's upside down, that's why I was, oh, yes, yes, yes. Whoop, whoop, whoop. 59, oh, we're into the costume jewelry. Whoo, I took it. I am no good at Excel. But I'm good enough to make it work here. So then what I want to do is I want to, uh, let's see, I think I want to move this one there and this one. Oh. All right, I figured it out. Uh, I First I start with the numbers in the left column and then I fill in all the stuff on the right. Then I move the numbers column over to the other side select both and do sort, but only by column A, alphabetically. That's how this works. Oh my goodness, I have to go.